Hello, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. And today is, I'm gonna call this World Teddy Bear Day. Yes, look on the calendar, it's Teddy Bear Day. Don't you just love teddy bears? I don't know. They just seem to be universally loved by everybody. Now, I actually have one quilt that I put a teddy bear on and I was able to find it. <laughs> it's also in my gallery. It's one of my oldest quilt designs. This was done years and years ago. This was done probably 22 years ago when I first started my business. So here he is, my cute little teddy bear sitting in a chair. I really like the sort of old fashioned teddy bears. You can see he has sort of a grumpy little face, doesn't he? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not like the smiley teddy bear person. I like these ones that are like giving me some attitude. So here's my teddy bear quilt. Now, if I were going to do this again, I'd probably work on the border coloration a little bit differently. Um, maybe tone down that white so it's not popping out so much. Here's the back that I did on this one since you like to see the backs. Yeah, this guy is just so sweet. And when I did this pattern, I actually did an embroidery with it, which was a, is a pillow. So there you have that. And it's sort of like a big flange uh, around it. So this part, you know, the pillow goes in the middle part and then this outer edge is loose. So there's no pillow in that part. So it's kind of an interesting effect and I've got uh, some fabric along with and buttons along with the embroidery. Now this is such an old pattern that when I first did it, I printed pictures and pasted them or taped them to the front of the pattern sheets. That's the way we did patterns because we didn't have great graphic skills. We were all little individual people doing this. My drawing inside was by hand. It was hand drawn. Uh, I didn't have the ability on the graphics yet. I didn't know how to do that yet, but I was still putting out patterns. So it is very, very old. If you happen to have one, it is a collector's item. <laughs> That's like so, so old. So there is no pattern for me to link you to. <clears throat> it was a, a very short lived uh, part of my business. The first probably 10, 12 patterns were very short lived until I sort of got the skills up to do them more professional looking. But today I wanna see what your teddy bear quilts look like. If you have teddy bear fabric, teddy bear images, just show them. It'll be fabulous, fabulous quilt show today. All right, what else is going on? So if I, do I have dirt on my face? <laughs> on my clothes? <laughs> because I decided this morning it was absolutely fabulous out. So I went out and did some gardening. Let me just sit down a second. I, I needed, to, I've been watching Laura of Garden Answers YouTube and she was talking about working zones of her yard. And I thought, oh, that's a good plan. You know, like you just pick a section of your yard and on Mondays you do that section. Another section, you know, she has a really big property because it's her business to garden and show you on her YouTube channel. Um, but mine's a lot smaller. So I could say like, you know, once or twice a week, I could pick a section and garden. And it was so gorgeous this morning, much more beautiful than it's been uh, nice temperature. So I did that. I did, you know, an hour of cleaning up the weeds and the dead stuff and things like that. And I thought about those zones because those zones are um, interesting because they can work for a lot of things. You could zone out the type of projects that you're working on, be it, you know, quilting or, or non quilting projects. And you could say, you know, on Mondays, I'm always going to attack binding for 15 minutes. You know, maybe you don't like doing binding. So like 15 minutes and that'll be it. And it'll eventually get done. You could have projects like cross stitchers often say on, you know, Tuesday they do um, their Halloween projects or their fall cross stitch. On Wednesdays they do uh, their 4th of July and their, or their summer ones. They do Christmas on Thursdays. You know, they, they sort of rotate around so they're working every day on something different and moving all the projects sort of forward and enjoying it because they get to switch it up and change it up. It's not always the same piece. So if you have been thinking about how to sort of segment stuff, you might look at doing that. I also got a beautiful card from Harriet. Thank you, Harriet. Isn't that gorgeous? So pretty. He's so cute. Look at the little acorn he's holding. He's putting it in the mailbox. I just love it. Just love it. 
Okay, speaking of images, my cross stitch, the one I'm doing monthly, I don't know, am I gonna do a monthly one next year? Hmm, we'll see. We'll see if somebody shows me one that I want to do. I might just not do that next year and just do other things. But here, here is I got the tree and the little bird uh, and the little stardust along the top edge is, you know, I just have to do the blue up here and then I need to tack the words, tack the words on the bottom and get that done. And this is what the, the little house is what we're doing for this month. And I also got my cross stitch stuff start getting organized in this little container for what I'm currently working on. So I really like that. I take the floss biddies and then wrap them and then they can sign the stack in here really nicely and then I have a pair of scissors in there so that's been working good I've sort of tried that out and I'm like okay that that is working for me you know you just have to try things so you never know what's going to work or not work I do a lot of things with the cross stitch that I'm like you know this is not becoming a habit for me so let me try something else and eventually I'll find the thing that gets to be like okay it's a routine I did do all my trimmings, got that row sewn up. So I'm pretty happy with that. Yes, got to keep on top of it. So it doesn't get too much. What else? Okay, all my, all my stars, the two sections did not get sewn yet. So they're still uh, up there. The uh, summer soiree, I did put the, this is the border I selected for this week's block. So the surprise block. I like it on there. It's got that medium tone. So I have three green, two peach, two of that border, and then three of the sort of light, like this, light color border. So I have two more. One of them is definitely going to be peach and it'll be the next one. So whatever I'm doing there, I'm gonna put a peach because I sort of like the layout of this right now. Um, and then I know definitely in the last one, it has to have some black in it, but not a border. But the border will probably be one of these lighter background ones but the block has to have some black to balance out for where the black is so that i don't have you know probably the next two will both have black in it and i have enough so yes 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 now i have to tell you funny <laughs> and greg's not here so he can't hear me <laughs> so we were sitting we have a fire pit outside and we were sitting out there and um it got a little chilly the other evening and we had shorts on so he says i'll go in and get a quilt and i'm like think oh well this will be interesting because right on the other side of the wall in the house are like you know six seven hundred quilts in the on the shelves and then i do have some in the living room which we use and i had actually just taken a stack of fall ones and put them on the rocker because i want to switch the quilts out and i haven't hadn't gotten to it yet. have still haven't gotten to it yet so he comes out with two pieces one of them is a table runner <laughs> and he sits down he puts the table runner on his legs and I'm like that's a table runner so that's not going to even wrap around your legs it doesn't wrap around anything you know it's like <laughs> I said, that's not that's not that's not a good option dear so I went in and got him a different quilt but I'm like oh, does your family do this too yeah when there are 800 quilts in your house and they bring out a table runner to cover up with. I could not make this up. This is true. <laughs> oh. So it is fall and in fall, I like to get some foodie stuff because they're just fall things, fall foods that come out that only come out in the fall. So, and, and if they are cute, you know, I'm a sucker for anything that they repackage that it looks cute. So I got the Reese's with the, the pumpkin face on it. You know, like I haven't opened it yet. So it probably doesn't even look like a pumpkin. It's probably just got that sort of odd blobby shape, but I don't care. It had a pumpkin. Then I had to get the autumn mix because I really like the autumn mix. I also like the um, Indian corn or the chocolate topped corns. The, the harvest corns whatever they call them now but I also like those as a whole bag so I haven't gotten that yet and the thing that definitely only comes out in the fall are these cookies do any of you get these these Swetzlers now these have a long memory for me because my Nana and pop pop used to get these in Pennsylvania and they're very hard <laughs> they're hard cookies they're not soft at all <clears throat> they're hard cookies but they have a great, intense, spicy flavor to them. You know, the 
um, they've got molasses and cinnamon and cloves and the, t the flavor is just over the top. Uh, they're great if you dip them in tea or dip them in coffee if, if they're too hard for you because they are pretty hard. <laughs> So I got I got those. Now they used to come in a different kind of box. Okay, so I'll open it so you can see. Yeah, so they come as like in a long long container. I forget the box used to look look a little bit different years ago, but I'm always thrilled when I can find them because they only make them a certain well at least they only carry them a certain time of year in my grocery store. I'm happy they even carry them. Now, remember the other day when I couldn't find my UFO list? I have it printed, but I couldn't find the document. Well, Greg couldn't find it either. So what we did is we took a picture of it and did the uh, Google interpret. So it will look at the words and interpret it into a text document. So I did that. So now I can take it and put it, reform I just have to reformat it a little bit. And I did save that into my folder called Quilt Inventory. So yes, so whatever I was doing at the end of December when my brain was just not functioning very well, um, wherever I put it, it'll probably show up after I redo everything, right? As soon as I redo it, the original will show up. That's just the way it works. <sighs> Now, I did have a few people ask me about upcoming sew-alongs, which if you remember, they're all in the calendar, but <laughs> I will tell you again. Uh, so the uh, Winter Woodland, is that, no, win, win, Wonderful Woodland. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> that one is coming up, but I don't know what date, either end of October, beginning of November, because there were the, the fabric finally came in to cut the kit. So was like, I asked Fat Quarter Shop to put together a kit. We did a special coloration with Joanna Figueroa's fall fabric. It's her pattern and it's so gorgeous, but you know, it takes time. Everything takes time to put together. So hopefully once that's there, then we can kick off. Now, of course, you've, if you've already bought the book and you need to get it started, well, you can of course get it started if you weren't going to wait for the kit. Um, and the kit is in the colorations of this picture. They also have coming up the next block Wednesday information. I'm getting that edited right now. So probably next Wednesday, I'll show that to you. And then the happy everything. Uh, so along from my book, I, that supply list is, I'll get that put out soon too. All right, so those are the things going on. You're going to show me your teddy bear. Yes, here we go. Here's my guy. Show your teddy bears. We want to see all the teddy bears today. Whoops, there we go. I need two hands. <laughs> so I love you, my friend. Mwah. See you online.